Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Today we are going to talk about projectile motion. Let's get started. What is projectile motion? Projectile motion is a two dimensional motion. If any object is projected into the air and it falls under the effect of a gravity, this is called projectile motion. And remember, here we are ignoring air resistance. For a ball kicked off by a player, a ball thrown by a cricketer, a bullet fired from a gun are the examples of projectile motion. What is trajectory? Trajectory is a path followed by a projectile because the projectile path is like this. So this path, this curvy and parabolic path is called trajectory. This is basically projectile motion. You can see this is two dimensional. This is X and this is Y. It's two dimensional motion. And you know, the initial velocity is provided from this point. This is called the point of projection or the place of projection. And here the velocity is this one like this this is a velocity vector initial velocity and this is the x component vix and this is the y component of the initial velocity this is viy this is the initial velocity in initial velocity vector that has been provided to the object to travel all right so here this is initial velocity and it has two components this is the x component and this is the y component so x component is written v i cos theta and this is the angle theta this is the angle theta and here v i y is v i sin theta this is the initial velocity provided so the important thing about the velocity is the Vix, this is the x component of the velocity that will remain constant throughout the motion. If you see this component over here, so Vix will remain same, Vi cos theta. If you come here and just talk about initial velocity x component, it will remain same, Vi cos theta. So it won't be changing, it will remain same. Why it would remain same? Because there is no force acting in the x direction because this is the body that is we are calling projectile is only traveling under the effect of the gravity and gravity always acts downwards so there is no force in x direction there is only one force force of gravity that is here fg is the force of gravity and this is gravitational acceleration that acts downwards so there is no force here, there is no force here, there is no force in x direction. That's why we are saying this x component of the velocity will remain same throughout the motion. The y component, this component, velocity component is decreasing up to this point and then increases again in the reverse direction. This magnitude of the vector, if we draw here, what will happen? It will be like this, but it will be smaller in magnitude here. And x component will remain same. It will remain same. And y component will be decreasing in magnitude. So it will be vy, vfy. It will be little decreasing in magnitude. And at this point, top point, this is the top point. At the top point, vfy y component of the velocity will be zero because it will not further move upwards that's why the f v f y will be zero and what about v i x here the v i x initial component will remain same so v i x is equal to v i cos of theta it will remain same it will not change as we discussed earlier this won't be changing but the y component would be changing every single point throughout the traveling. Vfy direction will be like this. Vfy here will be like this. So as it moves down, its magnitude will increase. 
VFY will increase, right? This is the point where it is coming. It's the final point. This is a target. So this we are calling point B and the initial point place of projection, we are calling this point A. The distance between A and B is called the range of the projectile. This is the range of projectile. What is the height of projectile? This is the height of the projectile. The maximum point is here, you know. This is a maximum vertical distance traveled by the projectile. So we are saying this is the height of the projectile. This is denoted by H. And this is noted by R, range of the projectile. And the time taken to travel from this point to this point, the total time is called time of flight. What will happen with acceleration? The acceleration will have two components, AX and AY. What about AX? Do you think that AX will be there? Is there any force acting in X direction? Right or left? No. For sure, there is no force acting in x direction. Ax will be zero throughout the projectile motion because we are considering only one force that is gravitational force. That is only we are we are saying that the projectile is moving under the effect of gravity only and gravity acts downwards. There is no force acting right or left. We are ignoring air resistance, remember. So AX will be zero because there is no force in X direction. So let's talk about AY. What do you think? AY will be there? Yes, because there is a force in Y direction and that force is gravitational force and that will remain same throughout the motion right that will remain same throughout the motion that's why a y will also remain same it will be taken as minus g throughout the projectile motion a y will be minus g because it will remain fixed why because the force acting on the projectile is same and as you know force and acceleration are directly proportional to each other as per Newton's second law. So, if this is fixed, this will also be fixed. All right, if this is changing, acceleration would be changing. So we are saying that the force of gravity is fixed. It will remain same. So acceleration will also remain same and that will be minus G throughout the projectile motion. Now we want to find out instantaneous velocity of a projectile. What is instantaneous velocity? It is the velocity of a projectile at any instant of time. We want to find out instantaneous velocity over here. This is the velocity vector it, and it has x component and this is the y component. And this is the instantaneous velocity. This is the angle theta. As you know that the vector can be written in the form of its two components. How can we do that? We can use the Pythagoras theorem. So this is the hypotenuse here. And this will be x component, this is y component. This is basically base and perpendicular base square plus perpendicular square. These two are equal. So this will be V instantaneous is equal to under root VFX square plus VFY square. So this is how we get this expression. We will write VI cos of theta. What about Y component? So Y component will get like this using the first equation of motion vf is equal to vi plus a t so let's apply y because we are interested in y so let's apply y over the whole equation so vfy is equal to v i sine theta because this is y this is sine theta what is a y as we discussed earlier minus g the equation would become like this vi sine theta minus gt so this value you have to put here this one 
v i sine theta minus g t so here will be square and this one will be squared so this is instantaneous velocity v i y and v i x all right and here at the top as we discussed earlier the final component of the velocity will be zero but x component it will remain same right v i cos theta what is v i y here v i sine theta what is v i x v i cos theta so let's apply third equation of motion what is third equation of motion 2 a s v f square minus v i square this is the third equation of motion so here we are talking about initial and final velocity that's why we can apply this that's this equation to and because we are talking about the vertical distance maximum height means the vertical distance so it is not in the x direction it is in the y direction that's why we'll apply y here y y y and y so what is a y minus g what is s y is it the height of the projectile v f y final velocity over here zero initial velocity v i sine theta y component square minus 2 g h is equal to minus v i square sine square theta then this minus will be cancelled and h is v i square sine square theta divided by 2 g so this is the maximum vertical distance of the projectile that we are calling height of the projectile what is time of flight time of flight is the time during which the projectile remains in the air it is a time taken for a projectile to travel from the place of projection to the point where it hits the ground from this point a to this point b the total time taken is t with that we are calling time of flight so in order to find time of flight we can apply second equation of motion You can find out this time using the first equation of motion on two, but I am doing with the second equation of motion. What is second equation of motion? S is equal to V I T plus half A T square. The body is not covering any net vertical distance. It is moving up and it is coming down on the same horizontal line. So there is no net vertical distance. So that's why we are taking y over here. What is sy? There is no net vertical distance. So this will be zero. What is vi? vi sine theta. What is ay? It is minus g t square. So it will be minus v i sine theta t is equal to minus g t square divided by 2. This minus will be cancelled. And we'll write v i sine theta t is equal to g t square divided by 2 so this t will be cancelled from here and this 2 will come over here 2 v i sine theta this g will come over here down and will be t and this 2 v i sine theta over g is equal to capital t what is this capital T? This is the time of flight. 
What is time of flight is the total time taken by a projectile to travel from point A to point B. What is range of projectile? Range of projectile is the maximum horizontal distance covered by a projectile is called range of projectile. And this is called range of projectile. It is noted by R. So how to find this? We can apply the second equation of motion. What is second equation? S is equal to V I T plus half A T square. We are trying to find out the range of the projectile and what is range of the projectile? The range is the maximum horizontal distance, is the maximum horizontal distance. So this is horizontal means X axis. So we will take X over here. So what is SX? From this point to this point, we are taking R. This is range. What is VIX? VI cos of theta. T. T is time, right? Time of flight. The total time taken to move from point A to point B. That is time of flight. So that's why I put capital T over here. 1 by 2. AX is 0 and t, t square. So this side will be cancelled because this is zero. So range will be vi cos of theta into time of flight. What is time of flight? 2 vi sine theta over g. So our expression will be like range is 2 vi square sine theta cos theta over g so this will become basically this two and this is trigonometric identity and it will become like this 2 sine theta cos theta is equal to sine 2 theta 2 sine theta cos theta is equal to sine 2 theta. This is trigonometric identity. So we will apply this trigonometric identity. Range will be like this. Vi square sine 2 theta over g. This is called range of the projectile. Maximum horizontal distance covered by a projectile. And now let's talk about four important things about projectile. The first thing is how maximum range can be attained? You can attain maximum range if your angle is 45. If you are projecting the body with the angle 45, then it will cover maximum range. All right, and at that time, your maximum range would be equal to four times height. This range will be equal to four times the height. This is the height. This is the maximum vertical distance that is called height. So ra your range would be equal to four times height if you are throwing or projecting a body with the angle of 45. So the angle of 45 is very important. Both projectile will cover the same range, same horizontal distance. So that's why these two angles are called complementary angles. All right, the pair of angles which have the same horizontal distance provided that initial velocity and value of g are kept constant. So these two angles will be called complementary angles. So there are so many complementary pairs like 10, 80, 20, 70, 30, 60, and 40, 50. So all of these pairs are called complementary angles and see if you just add both of them you will get 90 degrees 10 degree plus 80 degree 90 degree 20 degree plus 70 degree 90 degree right if you just add them you would be getting 90 degrees so all of these sets of angles are called complementary angles
if your if the projectile height is equal to the projectile range then the angle would be 76 degrees so remember this point you can find out this angle by keeping the two expressions equal you have the height expression and you have the range expression if you both keep them equal and find the theta that would be 76 degree that means that if you throw your satellite with the angle of 76 degrees your range would be equal to the height so vertical distance would be equal to the horizontal distance so i hope you have understood the concept of projectile motion and i'll see you in the next lecture till then take care bye bye